Hi everybody, today I have a quick video for you. I want to show you how you can give access to your coding agent to the most up-to-date documentation about most major frameworks for coding out there. So we're going to use MCP, Model Context Protocol, which if you don't know by now, MCP is a standard way that Entropic proposed to get information into your large language models. So the idea is that large language models are limited. For example, if I take Gemini, um, not Gemini, sorry, if I take OpenAI GPT 4.1, which was released literally six days ago as I'm recording this. It has a knowledge cutoff of June 2024, which means that this model, which is quite expensive, it's, it's cheaper than their previous models, but the state-of-the-art model doesn't know anything after June of last year. That's already 10, maybe 9 to 10 months ago. But one thing that is for sure in the technology space is that technology moves super fast. There's a new Next.js version two times a year, React updates almost yearly, and patches and minor updates happen on a daily basis. So you cannot imagine that a coding framework like Next.js will stay the same as it is for more than a few weeks. Even for every day, it could change. So the idea now that we want to do is that we want to use MCP to give access to our models to more up-to-date information. This is where Context7 comes in. Context7 is a single MCP server which lets you scan the documentation of all these major frameworks. They have in total, if I remember, over 2,000 libraries, 2012, if I just look now at this time. And what they do is that they index their documentation and they make it available back to your LLM. So an example would be, how can I use the next JS function called after? So if we look here, this is an example, right? You could ask this and your large language model, which would be set up to use this MCP server, would be able to look for that documentation. So the setup is not super hard. You have this GitHub repo, and I will share a link down in the description. You will have to clone that GitHub repo locally onto your computer, and you will need to set it up into your MCP servers. If I go into my own setup, here I'm on, I'm on, I'm using Klein with Gemini 2.5. I open the MCP servers that I have. I have only Context 7, which is the one we're talking about, and Playwright. I still keep Playwright around because it's able to use the general web for me when I need something a bit more specific. But as you see, it's fairly simple. You just paste in your config, which is the same config that has been shared here. So this is, will be available for Cursor, Windsurf, VS Code, Cloud Code, essentially anything that supports an MCP server. And if you need a video on how to install MCP servers, let me know. Maybe I could make a list of what I think are the 10 more, more useful or, or if you want just a general introduction on MCP servers because I do think there's a lot on the web available, but if you want me to dive more in depth, that's something I can do also. So the way you would use it after. For example, when you would prompt it, you would say make a dashboard page in Next.js and use Context7. That first prompt was a bit too innocent. <laughs> I did not provide enough information, so even Jim and I just said, wait a little bit, <laughs> this is not enough information. What do you want to say? Do you want to show user-specific data? So please don't prompt like this. Please use the Vibe Architecting approach that we discussed a bit before. But a few more answers later, I reaffirmed that I want to use Context7 to read the Next.js docs. It says, okay, what do you need to read in the docs? I said, okay, the routing... Um, for app router. And then what it did, it went and it fetched the full context 7 docu um, documentation. And now it has the Next.js docs here. If you see, these are the docs, even giving you links to the proper documentation page. It's now able to use and consume that information into the coding planning that it does. So instead of coding just against its own training data, which is always prior to the knowledge cutoff date, it's now able to use up-to-date documentation for it. And if you want to look at all the available frameworks that Context7 has, 
a lot of things are, are on there already. It's already over 2,000 libraries. So MongoDB, Next.js. If we go down a lot of big names like Android, some of them are a bit too big. For example, .NET has 3,000 tokens, which will not fit in any large language model at this point. But something, for example, like Next.js will fit within Gemini 2.5 really great. great. It will fit within the 1 million context window um, maximum tokens. So there you have it. Just a simple video on how, you know, a, a nice tool that I think is useful for anybody vibe coding or trying to get better results out of AI coding. Let me know what else you would like me to cover and I'll see you in the next video.